It was a stagecoach, your getaway car, a P-51 Mustang, your first pickup truck, and a slick set of wheels sure to impress your best gal. Whatever the little red wagon was to you, there's no denying it was a big piece of American history. This is the story of Antonio Pasin and the Radio Flyer. Anyone that says imitation is the sincerest form of flattery has probably never had their invention stolen by a major corporation. More about Sears than my decision to rebadge this as a radio flyer at the end of this video. At the age of 16, Antonio Pacin came to America in 1914. He left his home, a small town near Venice, Italy, in search for a better life in Chicago. Antonio found work where he could alongside other new Americans in a variety of day labor type jobs, carrying water, washing vegetables, and doing some basic construction. Eventually, he was able to save enough money to rent a one-room workshop on Chicago's west side. Antonio's father and grandfather were cabinet makers. He was able to put his design skills to work by building phonograph cabinets. He called his first company the Venetian Furniture Company after his hometown. Antonio built a small wooden coaster wagon as a means of transporting his goods to market. Vendors and shopkeepers loved the wagons and started placing orders even though they weren't for sale. <laughs> Before long, the demand for his wagons outpaced his cabinets and uh, he found himself working late into the night to meet demand. By 1923, Antonio employed several people and in honor of the Statue of Liberty, Liberty Coasters was born. The Liberty Coaster line produced high quality, affordable wagons and people loved them. As the 20s grew tough, America had to learn how to make do or simply do without. Even in those tough times, Americans dreamed of a better life for their children and continued to demand Antonio's wagons and the basic value they delivered. In the height of the Great Depression, with many businesses closing their doors, Antonio pushed forward borrowing manufacturing advancements from the auto industry. These innovations earned him the nickname Little Ford. He applied mass production techniques to wagon making, with production costs so low that even during the Depression, they were flying out the door to the tune of 1500 a day. A wagon for every boy and girl. In 1930, the company was renamed Radio Steel and Manufacturing. The all-new steel wagons were named as tribute to two famous men of the day. Italian inventor and engineer Guillermo Marconi developed the first long-distance wireless telegraph and in 1901 broadcast the first transatlantic radio signal. Charles Lindbergh completed the first solo non-stop flight across the Atlantic in 1927. Combining those two marvels, Antonio christened his new metal wagons Radio Flyer.
getting a lot of weld BB spatter on this. That stuff right there will keep the weld spatter down. I figured we'd have some comments on this, so I wanted to address it. We had about a two inch by one inch hole on a compound curve. And this is something that I can make patch panels for. But one thing I learned a long time ago is if you have access to both sides, you can use your welder and kind of build a bridge and, and actually remake the steel that's there. And I, I actually enjoy doing this. The rust is thin the metal to a point and you're welding back to the point where you have strong steel. And then you start to bridge the gap and you kind of like almost 3D print with your welder until the hole or the shape is, is formed. This particular hole was quite large and I knew I could do it and I had my welder in my hand so I just went ahead and kind of reshaped the entire thing thing and uh, with a little bit of grinding it turns out great and the comments we probably would have gotten before this is that that's not how you do that or whatever well you know you can do things a lot of different ways and I can absolutely make these patch panels if you haven't seen or you don't know I was a long time body technician did a lot of classic car restorations and uh, as long as you have access to both sides of the panel um, this is a great technique to use
you know, I'm not really sure if we can call this a restoration. I think it's more of like a restoration modification or a resto mod, if you will. So, yeah, Sears. Uh, if you don't know, Sears kind of, <laughs> they just kind of take whatever they want as far as patents. And um, they, they end up hurting quite a few guys. So just get online, Google it, or I'll put a couple links in the description to where you guys can see some stories or some videos of uh, some people that Sears has hurt in the past. And, you know, I really like the story of the Red Wagon. I kind of wanted to tell that. I found this thing out in a ditch, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to tell the story and also be a really cool birthday gift for a young man that's celebrating his first birthday. So if you want to see more history in the restorations, please leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Kind of weird because it's not really a historical restoration or anything like that. It's just me having fun and talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is history. So if you guys want more history, by all means, tell me about it in the comment section. Tell me what you think of the new format, and we will see you guys on the next video.